I see a cultural dissonance between the campaign that says say no to drugs and our pervasive use of drugs in our culture. And I wonder, maybe there's a place in the elite athlete for the use of anabolic steroids. And so I would ask you to think about this today. And maybe you don't have to say yes to anabolic steroids. I'll accept maybe. And I will accept maybe okay to steroids. But I want you to think about the use of steroids carefully managed under medical supervision to exact the very best in human performance. So we have a legion of athletes that have been vilified, uh, they've been condemned for their use of performance enhancing drugs, gifted athletes who wanted to do the best that their genetic potential allowed. And when they did, and that is when they used anabolic steroids, then they were stripped of their medals or their records asterisked or they're in some way devalued, I think, in the sports world and in our general community. And I'd like you to think about the value of that as we approach the Olympics coming up in 2012. So when I saw Ben Johnson run down the track in 1988 and do a 9.7900 meter dash, I was transformed. I was I was amazed at the majesty of that event. Here is a guy. I didn't see steroids falling out of his pants when he ran down the track. I didn't see needles coming out of his shorts or any special motors or anything. This was human performance at its finest. And I thought, and I was so disappointed to hear that he was stripped of his medals when it was revealed that he used anabolic steroids. Now, I wonder, are we in Salem, 1692? Do we have to pursue athletes who may or may not have used drugs? Can't we just celebrate fantastic performances? Can't we celebrate the very best that humanity has to offer with respect to athletic events? So I'm asking you to think about the use of performance-enhancing drugs in general and steroids in particular. Now, there are lots of arguments why we shouldn't use steroids. Well, one of the big arguments is that they're not natural. Well, I contend that they're very natural. Now, you don't have to remember the carbons and the hydrogens in this talk, but I'd like you to look at the similarity of all these compounds. These are all steroids, and they're all made in your body. There are mineral, cor mineral corticoids that help regulate the water and salt balance in your body. There are glucocorticoids that help you with your metabolism and your immune system. We have then two classes of drugs called sex hormones, the estrogens, which are largely made, if you have the equipment, ovaries. And we have the testosterones, which are largely made in the testes. But all of us have all of these drugs because estrogens are also made in the adrenal glands and other tissues. Testosterone is also made in the adrenal glands. And so humanity shares a concentration of estrogen and testosterone. Some women have higher testosterone concentrations than some men. Generally, the, av the average man has higher testosterone than the average woman. But these drugs are very much natural, and they all derive, all of those four classes of steroid hormones and their derivatives come from a compound, 27 carbons big, called cholesterol. And we make cholesterol, we eat cholesterol, and from that we synthesize testosterone. Now, testosterone is not a magic drug. When athletes take anabolic steroids in the form of testosterone or, or its derivatives, they don't immediately transform, but I really wasn't sure about that. So what I did was I injected my mother-in-law. <laughs> so what I did, now I've blurred this image to protect the children in the, in the audience, 
But what I did was, this is a before picture in her international competition uh, table tennis at my house. And I injected her with steroids and I waited, oh, two, three hours. And this is what happened. <laughs> now, of course, this is silly. Steroids don't transform those who are sedentary. Steroids are one of an array of components that athletes use to improve performance. It is natural, it can be controlled, and it does facilitate the very best of their genetic potential to develop huge, um, iconic performances. Jason Giambi, however, was wise in his congressional testimony when he said steroids don't help you hit a baseball. And he's absolutely right. They may augment performance in some athletes, but not everyone. Jason Giambi is a gifted athlete, was gifted long before he ever took steroids. And I contend that steroids are a, can be a useful complement to a training array that elite athletes do. Now, anabolic effects the effects of anabolic steroids fall under two classes. One class is called anabolic, and anabolic means building up. And when you build up, you're primarily building up muscle tissue. Anabolic steroids go into the cells of muscle tissues and help the muscle tissue express more proteins, which uh, produces more muscle tissue. With the increased muscle mass that athletes get, then they also get increased strength, and they also get the ability to sustain repeated bouts of exercise in a short period of time. And this is important for track athletes who may have heats in the morning and then finals in the afternoon, or swimmers who have heats, or competitive cyclists who may do stage races and race 100 miles a day for three weeks, like in the Tour de France. So there are also androgenic effects. And as the name suggests, these are effects that make you more male-like. Now, in a man, you generally don't see the androgenic effects, but you do see them when female athletes use anabolic steroids. They be, it sort of blurs the difference between what is male and female, and that's certainly not for me to judge. If you're going to evaluate the performance, evaluate the athlete. Don't evaluate the drug, evaluate the athlete. This athlete as others do when they take anabolic steroids, get androgenic effects. And that includes in a more aggressive male pattern baldness. It includes a deepening of the vocal cords, uh, among other attributes. I'd like to say, suggest that, well, or I've heard that anabolic steroids are not good because we have a level playing field. And if you use anabolic steroids, then you've disrupted the quality of the field. Well, I contend that maybe we're not all the same. <laughs> this was certainly true when Manute Bowl attended the Case Western Reserve English School when he came here uh, in the 70s. It is not true because you can hearken back to your youth, or maybe you competed this morning, and you, you know that your competitors are not exactly like you. They're not exactly like you, and I can I remember in 1964, I was in an age group competition, national competition swimming, and Mark Spitz was competing in this national competition. It was, happened to be in Honolulu, Hawaii. And what happened was that I was petrified of Mark Spitz in 1964. He was an icon in 1964. He, by the age of 10, he had already 17 national titles. But I saw Mark Spitz on the deck of the swimming pool, and we're swimming in the same event. I think it was the 200 um, fly, and it was 13, 14 age group. And I saw him, and I said, my gosh, he looks about my height. He's about my age. Um, it looks like he has the same diet. I don't really know. And, and, he, and, and, I could, and now I think back, I'm sure he had the same concentration of testosterone. Now, fat, and what happened? He demolished me and everybody else. Now, fast forward 20 years from now, from then, sorry, and I, in my 30s, I was a, also a competitive swimmer of a very pedestrian nature, and I'm swimming uh, in an event, and I'm really nervous, and I'm getting ready to go on the blocks, 
And I lean over, and what do I see? I see a woman next to me. And that's because they had consolidated the heat. She's the same age, uh, young 30s. But what I also noticed was that she was pregnant. And so I'm completely aghast here. Oh, 200. I'm going to kill this woman. And when I reflect on it back, if I didn't know better, I'd say I could beat this woman on the basis of my hormonal concentration alone. Even though she's swimming for two, I can beat her <laughs> because my testosterone concentration is way higher than hers, which was true. And she demolished me. And the reason I bring this up, because anabolic steroids in themselves do not confer the ability to win. They do not confer superpowers. They help you express your genetic potential. Now, if, if you were to look at blood values of two athletes, we have an athlete A, we have an athlete B, and we were to look at an array of factors that might contribute to their performance, which every factor does. Can you tell me, in these two athletes, who the winner will be? My gosh, athlete A has much more testosterone than athlete B. But you couldn't predict the winner. Again, underscoring the contention that anabolic steroids are part of an arsenal of tools that make up an elite athlete. We do not have a level playing field. We don't wear the same shoes sometimes. We may be in a close weight class, but I'm, I don't know if the person next to me is stronger. And I want you to think about this in the Olympics as they come up. Look at the athletes. Are they all the same? Do they all have the same background? Did they all train the same number of hours? And I contend they probably didn't. And I certainly know that their hormonal composition is not going to be exactly the same. So, but you might argue that steroids are an unfair. Oh, okay, I get the fact that they're natural. And I get the fact that the body makes them. And okay, maybe I'll go with Frank a little bit that it, under medical supervision, uh, they're not harmful. But maybe they're an unfair intervention. And to that I would ask, maybe it's unfair if you wear glasses. Boy, that's an use of technology to help a performance. Oh, I, okay, so glasses should be outlawed. Well, what happens if you have eye surgery, as some professional athletes have, to augment their vision to not only get to 2020, but maybe 2015? Is that fair? Well, how about if an athlete injures themselves through the course of their activities and have access to the best medical care in the world? Is that fair? Is that fair to the athlete from Ethiopia? I don't know. And where is the hue and cry when women athletes use steroids in the form of estrogen and progesterone, birth control pills? As we saw earlier, estrogen is a steroid. Where is the hue and cry when these women use birth control pills to regulate the menstrual cycle to enhance their performance. Now, women use the birth control pill for many, many different reasons, but it is a steroid, it is used, it's acceptable. I contend that other steroids should also be introduced into the mix to produce elite performances. Now, there are downsides to steroids. There are definitely downsides to steroids. And if you looked at the label of your cough syrup, you would be horrified. You know that drugs that are misused are dangerous. And steroids are a very powerful compound that is dangerous and should be used judiciously. One of the side effects of steroids is the potential for liver complications. And this is a very serious consequence, even with normal dosage of anabolic steroids uh, that has to be watched carefully. Um, there is a syndrome called gynecomastia, which is an inappropriate growth of fat tissue on the chest. And this is one of the downsides to steroid use. And there is another downside. There is an increased amount of facial hair. And there have been women athletes at the elite level who are using anabolic steroids who have been caught shaving before performances, shaving their face before performances. So this is a downside. And I'm not suggesting that there aren't liabilities 
to the use of steroids. In fact, there's some profound liabilities. You could actually, if you used anabolic steroids, you could turn Republican and become the governor of the state of California. <laughs> so let's not devalue our icons. We have sports icons, some of which have a history of using anabolic steroids. Let's remember that it's not the drug that's doing the performance that it is a combination of all sorts of attributes that make an elite performance. And why not allow something that increases the genetic potential of your body, because we're all different. And let's also consider that to be an elite athlete requires a resolve, a dedication, and a perseverance that the more pedestrian athlete doesn't have. And so, you know, when I think about this, I think, well, basketball has really changed since 1891 when Dr. Naismith invented it. Sports evolve and rules change. And I wonder, is there room in our sports culture for the use of anabolic steroids? Thank you.